Virgin Trains USA has changed the paradigm of what Americans think about rail travel in this country. After about a year in service, the company has added its home station of Miami Central, acquired Express West to eventually connect LA to Vegas, rebranded from Brightline to Virgin Trains USA under Richard Branson's Virgin Group, and won the rights and funding to expand to Orlando, Disney, and Tampa. We're going to explore what this means for America in detail and the story it writes for the new generation. Stay tuned for a special community announcement at the end. While on Virgin during the Easter weekend, I was able to see some of the changes already being implemented. The new signs installed solidifies this change on the Virgin Group, and apparently another close shave for many for Richard. Despite the fake news lying of empty trains, ridership has actually increased a good amount, and is only expected to get better as real estate opens up around the station and Orlando becomes a stop. It was pretty packed with commuters and visitors, which is expected. The ride is comfortable as usual, even in the economy equivalent of smart seating on board. They're comparable to first class on an airplane, and their thick padding is a welcome change to Allegiant Airlines seats that's thinner than Jesse Smollett's defense case. Wi-Fi isn't the pain in the tuchus to sign on in, and Brightline made the conscious effort to make sure there are plenty of Wi-Fi repeaters on the train, allowing people to work and study anywhere as well as play to their heart's content. The addition of accessible wall outlets and USB chargers help keep your gear topped up. Every detail from the lighting to wheelchair access to the effortless openings of doors is a next step from anything that airlines or Amtrak has to offer in the US. The bathroom tops it all off as the victory cry here though, with one touch access and a super clean presentation, letting passengers know you and your loo are in the future. So this got me thinking, with all the changes happening for Virgin as well as America in general, what does this mean for our story to come in passenger rail? There was much that was outlined during my presentation at the Midwest High Speed Rail Association's annual meeting, and much of that stays true. If anything has become more apparent, it's that America's policies, whether federal, state, or local, have a priority issue. Whether you're conservative, liberal, far right, far left, or in the middle, most of us agree that our policies since the boomer generation came with age have not looked out for America's well-being as well as it should have. Now we can blame that generation all day, the fact of the matter is that the damage is done, and it's our turn now to fix what we've been given. Unlike our ancestors before, we can't just set west across the ocean and start over. There's nowhere else to go, well, unless you're Elon Musk. Regardless, we have the biggest chance to fix our infrastructure for the better. Not just for our generation, but for the next, and the ones after. Let's talk shop. Virgin Trains has changed the game on what trains are in the US on three levels. Image, funding, and urban planning. People are beginning to rethink the old choo-choo train image, and it's morphed into something sleeker, advanced, and modern. This is thanks to tangible examples like Virgin, travel to other countries, and channels accessible to anyone with an internet connection like us. Again, I stress the importance of how much it means for all of us to keep this channel growing. We're beginning to make bigger and bigger dents into policies and infrastructure development, and video consumption online is quickly becoming the best way to share information. Now when someone goes along US1 and sees bright blue zoom by while they're stuck in traffic, it changes their perspective. When someone online sees an in-depth video of Shinkansen's in Japan, it changes their perspective. We're starting to think beyond just Amtrak for America, and this is not to beat on Amtrak. I have mixed feelings about the company and its leadership over the past several years, but it's fair to say that neither party really cares about Amtrak and either used it as a political photo op with a cute speech and promises that are forgotten the next day, or the weak punching bag to beat on for the annual budget. That brings us to budget and funding. Again, Amtrak has had plenty to contend with in being massively underfunded. It's not to say that it deserves funding, but let's be frank, there's so much in the federal and state budget that doesn't deserve funding. Many are rightfully upset of how many trillions, 
Yes, trillions, the wars in the Middle East have siphoned away from the US, only to cause massive problems here at home and abroad on top of many dead. Millions of dollars of medical equipment for wounded troops and veterans will sit in warehouses for months. Millions are wasted for sports ball, like $850 million for the Pacers, or studying space golf. We spend more per student than any other country, including Switzerland, but we rank in the teens and 20s in education, we're 24th in literacy. That's behind Poland, Estonia, and Vietnam. For those of us that want free college or student debt absolved, we attack the wrong people. After all, institutions, public and private, are tax exempt and receive a majority of their funding in taxpayer dollars. Harvard, for example, has enough money saved up in its endowment to pay for the tuition of all its students for 120 years. We can agree, left and right, there's over 21 trillion reasons and other examples to show where our money is going. And it's not really to help us. What's extreme is that $3 million is too much to found an Amtrak route for local Hoosiers, but it's okay to spend millions more on a direct flight to Paris. Does it seem extreme to be upset when your daily commute is filled with potholes, traffic, and horrifying smog, but we can help build everyone else's infrastructure around the world? Does it seem extreme to be upset when you can't get clean water because your representatives misallocate taxpayer money? Does it seem extreme to be upset when the country you lose your manufacturing base to can build a complete network of high-speed rail in 10 years, but you can't build a single line in 15? We really do live in a circus when it comes to priorities. Realistically, we can't align through every single bit of waste and pork in the US budget. But one thing is for certain. We have too many hands in the cookie jar, and we get no cookies. What Virgin Trains has given the option for is sidestepping an ineffective government and giving that opportunity for private investment to pull money for this. Now granted, we know the government can and could fund these ventures themselves, especially when they pull hundreds of billions of dollars, a lion's share of the transportation into roads, followed by air, while leaving Amtrak like an emaciated Oliver Twist where all the other orphans are obese. Eventually, private operation is going to be key for running passenger rail in the long term, as it has in Japan having the ability to be a political punching glove rather than a punching bag, on top of being more competitive and innovative. Virgin and Texas Central Rail are pulling their weight behind their funding, as a public with vested time, interest and investment will do whatever it takes for billion dollar deals to get through as quickly and efficiently as possible. With public projects, not so much. Finally, let's touch on urban planning. This is far more important and central to our identity as a people, a country, and an economy. Think of it this way. Imagine a line of dominoes where the biggest one accounts for things like economy, immigration, demographics, healthcare, etc. Everyone focuses on those things, but what about the little things? What's immediately around us? Those are the smaller dominoes at the beginning of the chain that gets those things moving. And one of those first dominoes is urban planning. Put simply, would you rather wake up here or here? Since the murder of passenger rail in this country and the advent of the automobile culture, cities have catered more to the car than to human beings. Some saw the writing on the wall early on. This Canadian cartoon imagines Martians looking down on our planet and marveling at the creature known as the automobile that has taken over. Walt Disney, as I explained in a previous video, envisioned a walkable, functioning city through the original Epcot plans, where cars would be banned in its core and trains would move people throughout. Think of it, that was 50 years ago. Now luckily some of our rail stations from the past have survived. These stations are more than just buildings. For many cities, they act as the heart of the community, the soul of our heritage, and the mind of our people. A soulless, modern, artsy-fartsy station without much function conveys a sickness and disregard for the past, present, and future. It's already been proven that much of the boring, brutalist, modern architecture cities have been so keen on pushing since the 70s affects our psyche. Soviet-type commie blocks are as exactly as they would be. Depressing. On the other side of the spectrum, cookie-cutter American suburbans are equally depressing. This is a major factor in why millennials and Gen Z are re-urbanizing America and rating transit as a number one factor as why. A recent Navy Federal Credit Union study is one of the many studies to confirm this. 42% of all Americans would consider going carless, 
that number increases with the next generation where 60% of Gen Z and Millennials would go carless. Urban planners and some policymakers are looking to find ways on how to accommodate this new trend. The funny thing is it's not actually new. When the term American Dream was coined, it was in 1931 by James Truslow Adams. It was still a time of boundless opportunity and the freedom of movement our connected cities had within and without. Getting to the city and to the country or vice versa was as easy as getting a ticket and hopping on a train. Enter now our current American nightmare, where you're supposed to go into debt to get a college degree and mortgage a home you can't afford, working a job for a Fortune 500 company that will cut your wages or replace you, with the added bonus of being stuck for hundreds of waking hours out of the year in horrifying traffic, along with your other cellmates in Clown World. Virgin Trains has it pinned down for the next generation and is an example all new stations should be following. A fresh, airy design that reflects its surroundings, a multimodal and transit-oriented focus, and usage of space for commercial, residential, and community purposes. Virgin Miami Central isn't just planning to be a train station, it's correctly setting itself to be the heart of a revived community, the soul of refound heritage, and the new mindset of our people. Regardless of which direction you think our country is going, it's positive to see that rail transportation has a staying force in this generation. The question remains this, how much of a priority and responsibility will we take for it? And how fast can we build these new systems for our generation and the next? Thank you all for writing. If you enjoy the content we bring to you, be sure to subscribe to ARC by clicking subscribe and pull that bell. We're going to begin showing off community generated content from our Facebook and Instagram. For this episode, here are Ryan C.T. Lee's Hershey Nuggets packaging done in the style of Brightline's Charger, Amtrak's Acela, and Texas Central Railway's N700. I'm loving the time and effort people are really putting forth in this movement, and the creative geniuses subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Getting the word out on better transit in America is made possible by you. Share this video with your friends, it's no cost and everyone is welcome aboard. You can support ARC further by upgrading your ticket to ride by supporting us on Patreon, where for a limited time you can get this Make America's Railroads Great Again cap through pledging. There's only 19 left, and yes, they're made in America. So act fast. Thank you for your support. Next stop, the future.